sing to us, your children. Take old bells and rhyme the colors. Think of us as sliding fools do when a man is seasons loving you. We can teach them nothing, nothing, nothing but survival in a fortress there. They can teach us how to love living with. They can teach us how to love and live and wear bright ribbons on our hair. La 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 la. My harmony was perfect on you. Dogs like this. His ears. <laughs> what's in the glass? Oh, yeah, what's in that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we put the guitar down. That's a good thing. <laughs> No, no, right no. Oh, the other boy. Is there? All right. Oh, no, there's a part. Right. Yeah. 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 Great songwriter John Prime died, and uh, this is one of his songs. Although he didn't write it, he usually he writes really great songs. I've got a drawer full if we had the time. You know, his uh, last album that I bought was uh, "The Tree of Forgiveness," and it's got some great serious songs. I uh, I know Sean Colvin's covered his uh, "Come On Home," but there's great songs on that album. Anyway, I'm gonna miss John. He was a big influence on me. Yeah. What song is this? Okay, th this is a song about written by A. P. Carter. The Carter family did it, and he he did it a cappella on his album Dino, uh, Diamonds in the Rough, and that's the name of the song. Okay. <laughs> While walking out one evening, not knowing where to go, just to pass the time away before we held our show. I heard a little John Penny there. Heard a little minstrel band that was playing with all their might. Gave my soul to Jesus and left the show that night. The morning will be broken. Evening will be gone. No more gems to gather. Let us all press on. When Jesus comes to save us, says it is a Thank <laughs> you.
We love you. I think this is Cindy and Steve. Oh, hi, Cindy and Steve. Hi. Yeah. Right. I'm getting there right now. I don't Very like cool. Thank you so much, Fed. Nice. Thanks, Fed. Awesome. Hi, Fed. Hi, Fed. Hi, Fed. Hi, Fed. Thank you so much again, Fid. Um, thank you again to everybody that is here participating with us tonight. Uh, before I welcome um, John McEwen to play for us, I would just like to remind everybody one more time to please donate to the um, donate to the um, GeorgetownTrust.org uh, website. Twenty percent of those donations will all go to local first responders. And that is who um, Fiddler John has just um, is giving his tips for the evening to. And then also for John McEwen, through both our Facebook page and the email received, um, you can donate money to the meal train for the hospitals in New York. Um, and I think that he'll tell you a little bit more about that when he starts playing. So without further ado, here's John McEwen. The host? Uh, yeah, I'm unmuted by the host. How sweet of you, Sasha. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. From me to you. How you doing? Am I unmuted? I'm doing well. How are you? Okay, good. I'm just making sure we're, <laughs> we're talking to each other. <laughs> well, you're talking to everybody, and I'm just talking to you. So I'm just talking to you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. <laughs> um, what would you like me to do? I'll tell you what I'd like to do. Tell you about this weird path I've been on my whole life. Is that okay? You still there, Sasha? I think everybody agrees that that's a good idea. All right. I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads. Here, here's a, here, I'm not watching those right now, so, uh, but I want to show you, uh, um, I got to, I'm learning how to do Zoom, so it is quite an experience. Uh, but this is the, can you see this poster? Yes, we can. You can? Well, that guy on the right is me, 17 years old, playing the Golden Bear in Huntington Beach. Had a little bluegrass group with a guy in the middle singing. That's Les Thompson. And we had a dream to get out there and to play. This was our, this was the pinnacle of our career to play the golden bear in Huntington Beach. It was really wonderful. And uh, it was uh, a place where the Dillards had played, which is what we were doing is trying to be the Dillards. Ha ha ha. But uh, the Dillards, you know, the Darlin family and the Andy Griffith show. That was a, a, they played there and I played there. So, so there, I'm on my way. We got a review in the local paper that was really cool that said, they're fun and entertaining. <laughs> then uh, along came your dad. Oh, wait a minute. Let's not get to Gary first. Along came another guy that uh, I jammed with a few times. You, you might recognize him. Somebody ought to win a prize by typing in his name. Anybody recognize that guy from behind like that? Not me playing the guitar. Now, is that picture on the screen? Two guys playing? Okay, good. Well, that's a young Jerry Garcia. Oh, Garcia. Oh my gosh. And a young John McEwen. <laughs> but uh, as that was at a festival at. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. Okay. That was at a festival in Marin County, California. And it was really crazy because it was, uh, it led to this photograph. 
and uh, this is one that always surprises people. And a kid at that club. Eighteen, pardon? What would you say? The photos by John Seaver. It was really quite a, a wonderful thing. Uh, then that went on, things got even better for me because I was inspired, like I said, by the Dillards and I got to watch them a bunch of times. Rodney and Doug Dillard. Rod Rodney's a lifetime friend. I'm proud of that. But his brother, Doug Dillard, played the fire out of the banjo. And this is, this is, uh, oh, where did Douglas go? Come on. Yeah, there he is. Coming up, this is Douglas, and I want to see if anybody can guess the other guy in this shot. I got no. mm. <laughs> That's me in the middle, obviously. That's a leather suit. You hear me, Sasha? I got to unmute. Please unmute me, Sasha. Uh-oh. We can hear you. You're unmuted. Okay. Anyway, the guy on the right, uh, I'm in the middle, and the guy on the right, on, well, uh, on the right of the picture is J Ramblin' Jack Elliott. And I don't know if you people know it, but that's where Steve Martin got his Ramblin' Guy routine. I'm a Ramblin' Guy. <laughs> We were hanging around Ramblin' Jack Elliott, and Steve goes, I really like that rambling thing. Ramble, ramble. He just goes anywhere. <laughs> so that became part of Steve's routine. Ramblin' Jack Elliott didn't know it. And Doug Dillard, that's him, his famous smile. It was quite a thing to play with him that night. This was in San Francisco, 1974. That leather suit, by the way, <laughs> is now in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Standing up on its own. I never cleaned that. I had it. I wore that thing two or three years. I never had it cleaned. <laughs> and there were a lot of sweaty shows. <laughs> well, let's see what else we got. And then I met Gary Register. And Gary Register went with me, went with us, we became the first American band to tour Russia. And when we went to Russia, it was quite exciting. It was, it was like a whole other country over there, man. And I hope I didn't get rid of my thing there. Can you see that photo? I yeah. Can't. Okay. Yeah. Pardon? Speak to me, somebody. Yes, yeah, we can see we it. We can see it. Okay, good. Oh, Gary took that picture. That lady on the on my right is uh, the interpreter. I played at a music school in the afternoon. I did that four or five times, and this is one of my favorite pic pictures. Thank you, Gary Register, for taking that. After I came back from Colorado with him, I took him as our photographer. Now, Gary Register is a weird guy, right? <laughs> you, most of you know that. But he's a weird guy in a good way. I mean, I walked up to Gary, and, and it was in 19, 1977. He's shooting one of the 300 album covers that he did over his career. He's getting focused on somebody, getting ready. I said, and I, I just met him a couple of weeks earlier, and we got along great, great like that. And I said, hey, Gary. Um, do you want to go to Russia with us? And he goes, yeah, tell me when. I need at least three hours to be ready. <laughs> that was it. He didn't even look up. Anyway, how long are we going? I said, a month. He goes, okay. And that started a relationship that ended up with him moving to Colorado and we came back. He found Silver Plume. 
Anyway, three hours. Yeah. That neat. <laughs> so I thought I'd give you all that little background. Let me see if I can get get me back to Zoom. Ah, right back. What a wonderful program that is. Here's a tune on my my guitar. What kind of traveling song? Can you hear it, Sasha? Just not, okay. Guys, Fiddler John went to a guitar. Bye. Bye. See you later. This is Jam. Some nail really long to pick. Up in my life. Okay, what happened? Just went away. Muted. You are muted. You are unmuted. You are muted. Which I'm, okay, now I'm unmuted, right? Yes. Sasha, wave your arms around because I see you about this big. I see you, okay, if I'm good, okay? Okay. Now, I don't know if you know, but I've met Sasha at a very young age. Sasha Register was only, uh, well, she wasn't born yet. <laughs> but when she was born, I, uh, turn off your speaker, Sasha, I'm hearing feedback. When she was born, I was living in the Register's house down in the basement. Oh, but I met Sasha. It was separation time, but I was, it was fine. It was a wonderful family, wonderful. And she was learning how to walk and she had this little walker that with wheels on it. And she go, I was in the basement and she was on the floor above me, right at the table you're working at right now, Sasha. You know that, I think. And she'd roll around on the kitchen, roll, and I'd be down there seven in the morning hearing the wheels rolling around. Uh, oh, well, I'll go up. And then by the time I got up there, she'd be sitting in one of the chairs. Hello, good morning, John McEwen. Could you get me one of the bowls down? I'm way too small to get up on the shelf. Crack me up every time that and happens. And now it happens to me every morning. Oh, good. Stay <laughs> back. It's been a strange life. A wonderful one. It's the life I picked, though. Here's the plug. It's a book I got. I'd like at least half of you to buy one of these. It's a really fun read. And 
That's what I've been told. I'll tell you, when I finished the final manuscript and it was getting ready to go to print, the next day it was going to go to print, I started reading it. I couldn't put it down. That's a joke. Mm -hmm. But it is really a fun read. It's on Amazon, The Life I Picked. I'm really proud of the fact it's been out almost two years. And it's now, it's jumped back up to number 45 or 47 on Amazon. And here's a song that comes, that kind of defines the whole thing. Well, I am a pilgrim and a stranger traveling through this wearisome land. I've got a home in that yonder city. Good Lord, and it's not, no, it's not made by a man. I've got a father and a sister who have gone to that sweet home. I just pray that I can go and see them, good Lord, over on, on that other shore. Get it, boys. <laughs> now, when I go down to that river of Jordan, just to bathe my weary soul. If I could touch but just him and his garment, good Lord, I believe he could make he could make me make me whole. That's it. Now when I'm dead, laying in my coffin, all of my friends. Both of my friends all gathered round. They will say that he he's laying there sleeping, good Lord. He really His soul is found. Yeah, I am a pilgrim and a stranger traveling through that wearsome land. That wearsome, I'll tell you, that wearsome land. <laughs> when Gary and I went to Russia, that was the wearsome land. We went to Red Square that first night. We went to Red Square just to see what was going on. And sure enough, the guards, every hour, they come out and change the guard on Lennon's tomb. And the guys would go back at midnight, we saw them. And as we went through Red Square, a guy comes up to us. You you would like to buy cocaine? Uh, no, I'm I'm not in the market. How about marijuana? No, no, thank you. I didn't know if we were being set up. Besides, I never touched the stuff, and I didn't want to then, especially then. <laughs> and Gary and I were watching. There were two guys. We're walking like this, and out like. 50 feet and 100 feet away, there's two guys in trench coats. I said to the guy, I, I, I think there's, I know I'm much trouble, Russia man, Russia police. And these two guys walked up to this guy and looked at Gary and me and said, Russia police. And <laughs> then they looked at him, but before they walked up, he took a hypodermic needle out, out of his coat and stuffed it in his pants, not worried about where the needle was going. And he tried to get in the cab. The cab ran away, took off. Second cab came, it took off. It saw the two men coming after him very slowly. They knew what was going on. They took him away. He's probably <laughs> away. Well, we were there, we found out we found out that if a Soviet citizen was caught with any foreign currency, it was a three-year jail sentence. What a bummer. 
it was handy though. Any anytime we met somebody we didn't like, I just give them five dollars, you know, and say, "Comrade, here you go." Over there, he's got it. It was like a whole other country. I traded a pair of Levi's for a house and a car before I left. I am a pilgrim and a stranger traveling through that wearisome land. Get it. Everybody's talking and to like, oh, my birthday, which is mine. Thank you. Out there. Oh, hey. Good story. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're in Michigan. I want you to get this phone. Um, I trouble getting on. But San Diego, on. California. Hey, all right. All participants. I'm unmuted by the host. Okay, I'm just reading the screen, Sasha. I want to play a fast guitar tune, okay? It's going to be on this. Then I'll play a banjo tune, and then we'll say goodnight. And uh, since I'm on here with a fiddler, I thought I'd play a fiddle tune called the Fisher's Hornpipe. It's kind of starsh. I mean, that's not a normal circumstance, but at that, doing that, we're frustrating each other. I think she's, she's like, I was like, when is it? I can do that. I thought I was in a lot of anger. This is called double thumbing. It's where you go. Thumb index, thumb middle. Go to the first string instead of the second. Second. Change the rhythm. And I've used that. runs down to the Carson Valley Plain. There lived a young maiden, Darcy Farrell was her name. The daughter of old Dundee, and the fair one was she. The prettiest flower that bloomed o'er the range. She was courted by a young bandolier, and quite handsome was he I am to hear. He brought her silver rings and lazy things, and they promised to wed before the snows fell that year. But her pony did stumble and 
she did fall. Her dying not touched on the heart, one and all. Young Vandy in his pain put a bullet to his brain. And they buried them together as the snows began to fall. Now they sing of Darcy Farrell, where the Truckee runs through. They sing of her beauty in Virginia City, too. And at dusky sundown, to her name they drink around. And to the young Vandy, whose love was true. Melanie is like 105 years old. Yeah, that was awesome. Hey, Dee Dee, Scuddler, you try that. Very nice. Scarlett O'Hara, Vivian Lee. I think it said it works. And then Melanie was, um, I really don't know him. Tom was there. Tom was there. Oh, yeah. Well, Bart is gone. You just turn like a hundred and thirty. Oh, she's pretty good. Are you guys still alive? Yeah, like this. Or possibly. And when you want to yeah. and she looks her Sasha, wave your arms if I'm good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Darcy the Farrow was written by Steve Gillette, guitar picker, played with a flat pick in his fingers. He's great, still great. And Tom Campbell. I don't remember if it was, I don't remember if it was Tom's daughter or Steve's daughter, but that was Darcy. And they wanted to write a folk song, an old folk song, and they did. John Denver recorded that. All kinds of people recorded that. It's one of my favorite folk songs. Penny Nichols recorded it. And uh, I met Tom Campbell when I was working in Disneyland at 16, 17 years old. I was 18 when I met Tom Campbell. And he was working the park. He booked the Hootenannies in Disneyland. Monday night, they gave him Monday night because it was the worst night of the week. He made it the second best night of the week doing Hootenanny in Disneyland. He had Hoyt Axton, the Dillers, the Claire Ward Singers, oh, just a bunch of great people. I was working in the magic shop. I was barely getting into music. I wish I'd gotten to know him, but I didn't get to know him then. He later went on to run Muse, Musicians United for Safe Energy, the concerts that happened at Madison Square Gardens. He later went on to live in a teepee on Floyd Hill. He called me. He came by my house when he's living in that teepee and said, man, can you set up a meeting with me and John Denver? I said, well, you're going to put the teepee outside his house? What are you going to do? Uh, don't tell him I'm in a teepee. Okay. And because he is a good guy. He was a good guy. He had a meeting. Uh, I set up a lunch in Aspen the next day and we went and had lunch with, with Denver and he listened and he did 28 shows to help stop nuclear power in a couple of places it shouldn't be. And uh, he went on to form the Guacamole Fund. He puts together a lot of benefits with Bonnie Raitt and Jackson Brown and is still out there doing that. Good old Tom Campbell. He put us together with Linda Ronstadt in down in uh, New Mexico. And that was a benefit to raise money to help 
Indians uh, help stop a development on Indian territory, which was a very illegal and bad thing. In the middle of the concert, the middle of the concert, phone call came. The developers have backed off. It was a big cheer from 3,000 people. We did our show with Linda. I'm going to say goodbye now. Oh, John, you've got a couple, you've got a lot of questions. Do you want to answer a couple of them from people? Yeah, I, I don't see them anywhere. Can I see them? From... I'll, I'll tell them to you. Um, so Amy Scott asked how many different countries you've played in. I've only played one. <laughs> no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> um, uh, I think, I think if I count Georgia and Alabama, those are like two different countries, but uh, I think it's more like 21, 22. I never added it up. Interesting question. <laughs> went back and forth across Canada many times. Boy, it's terrible to hear about what happened in Halifax today, but it's a wonderful place, except for today. But um, go ahead. What's the next one? Uh, let's see. There's another one from Mary Elliott, and she's asking what your favorite song is, one that you play and one you wish was yours. Darcy Farrell is one of my favorite songs. I've never sung it for anybody, so it was kind of exciting for me to do that here. And... Uh, it was just, I love playing it on the guitar. I have a recorded version of that with, with uh, Jimmy Ibbotson and, uh, and Jennifer Warnes on an AIX DVD. Anyway, it's just a, a song. Bojangles is still a favorite. It's really a, never get tired of that song. It's a magic song for sure. Some of my instrumentals are favorites. I don't have any one particular one. I hope that covered it. <laughs> and another question, Sasha? And then there's another one from Amanda Cooper. Her son wants to know how many guitars you have and how old you were when you started learning. I was 17 years old as a kid learning to play the guitar from my brother. And my brother was showing me how to do things like like that and then he also knew freight train and I learned that kind of I played it like I can remember it <clears throat> it was a few years before I could go Six months later, I went to a club in Orange County called The Paradox and saw the Dillards. Oh, man, that was really crazy. I didn't know what a Dillard was, but Doug came out on stage and ripped into that banjo, and uh, that was it. That's what I'm going to do is be a banjo player. I was going to college. <laughs> that was over. That was over. I'd spend eight hours a day playing music in the music room, the practice rooms at the college. I, I, I did okay. I had a C average, but when I got to calculus, I got my first D. You have to study that stuff. I tried to cram calculus. It was impossible. I read four pages. Uh, I, I'm getting ready for the test. I read four or five pages. I went, what did I just read? I go start over. Ah, I got a D in the class. Oh, but <laughs> I fun playing the banjo and I kept playing and what stupider dream could you have even though my father my own father said I think you're going down the wrong road with this music thing well two things happened we got a record on the radio I was only 21 buy from me the rain very lucky oh ah, thank you uh, but that's another story that's the next time and when I was 19, I borrowed $2,000 from my dad. Dad, there's a guy here, the guy that ran the Golden Bear, was trying to get enough money together to hire Bob Dylan. And 
he was going to do a concert at the high school with Bob Dylan. I kind of knew who Bob Dylan album was. The Free Wheeling album had just come out. He's just a folk singer. Dad, can I borrow $2,000? That's a lot of money in 65, 66, whatever it was. He did. He said yes. He signed a note. He co-signed a note. Six weeks later, after the show had sold out, and I got my money, I made uh, twenty-five hundred dollars on the two thousand. I paid him back. He started liking the music business. I said a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what, Bob? Who? Anyway, that was fun. Go ahead. What was your next question? Um. Well. He still wants to know how many you have, how many guitars you have. Oh, yeah, geez, sometimes I drift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me think. I have about eight, seven or eight. I don't remember right now. I've got a couple of them loaned out. <laughs> like I've got my one of my banjos, two of my banjos loaned out. And uh, they're only mine because I possess them. <laughs> they are actually a reworked tree, you know. It used to be a tree, and somebody turned it in that part of the tree into a banjo. Two of my banjos, two of my banjos loaned out. Pardon? How many banjos? Oh no, it, there was feedback. I think um, everybody is asking you to play one more song, if you would. I'll play a song on the banjo. And I call this Lost in the Pines. I appreciate you asking. I'd really appreciate it if you check out the reviews on the book, The Life I Picked. And uh, got some great comments on the back by very, oh, you can't read them that well, by various people like Garth Brooks and Linda Ronstadt and uh, Steve Martin. But I just like to keep it out there. It's really fun. I spent 10 years writing that book. <sighs> It was worth it, too. Ah, talk to me, Banjo. Not yet. All these great songs that he wrote. That's what we got. No, I muted. She oh, you're unmuted. Uh, um, there's a couple more questions. Okay. There is uh, one asking who your biggest musical influences were growing up. 
Well, um, Doug Dillard, Bill Keith, the banjo player, also equally great. And an old guy named Lightning Hopkins. Lightning Hopkins played the blues. He played the blues and I asked Lightning, because of my brother, I listened to Lightning Hopkins a lot. An old black man from Houston, big gold tooth right there. Right. And I went to see him at the Ash Grove, which is now called the Improv. Oh. And I mean, he was a big influence. Big influence on I me mean, musically. For some of the choices of notes in bluegrass, it's the same as blues, only a lot faster. But. notes in, on a banjo and it's like -da 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 -da. <laughs> the lightning conference was really cool I, i'd play i play let's see when i was learning how to play i played bluegrass, but then I go to bed, I put a speaker on each side of my bed, and I play Lightning Hopkins, the last night blues album. Well, you know, I go home down the road now. I asked him why he played so many songs in the key of E, and he said something I'll never forget. He goes, oh, you can look around in E your whole life, and you'll never find all of it. I've been looking. Anyway. All right. Are we good, Sasha? Um, there's a couple more if that's all right. Okay, yeah, no, go ahead. I gotta go to uh, I gotta I, I have oh, I don't have anything to do. <laughs> all right. Um, there is. Come on. A question from Michael Stavi that he would like to ask you. Michael, you are unmuted to ask your question. Yeah, I must have pressed the wrong button. I don't have anything to ask, but I appreciate okay. it. <laughs> well, thank you for answering me so I didn't feel like I was talking to myself. <laughs> no, you were talking to me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I do have uh, a couple questions about a movie you maybe made in Old Tucson. Oh yeah, the music and of the wild. What world. that was like? It was wonderful. I I convinced the head of Nashville Network. It was the fourth thing, the fourth thing that I presented to him. I had three no's on projects. I fit, slid, took the fourth one, you know, a month or two in between. He said, "Paul, I think you're going to like this," and I I described the music of the Wild West using 1880s type of music shooting in old Tucson, using Crystal Gale and Marty Stewart, a whole bunch of people to make a movie. And he read this one, it's good to have one page. If it takes more than one page, it's BS, you know? I mean, as an example, how short it can be, a soldier is in World War II. All of his brothers have been killed and they have to send a bunch of guys to go save Private Ryan. That's the whole pitch, you know. Well, so the movie pitch went well. He looked at it. He looked at me. He looked at it. Looked at me. He goes, "I want to do this." I said, "Okay, two hundred thousand. I'll deliver in ten weeks." And he went, "Okay." <laughs> it was really fun. Um, oh, Michael Murphy was in it. Yeah, he was great. And Don How did Edward you pick the songs that you decided on? They were decided on during the 1800s. Streets of Laredo, Barbara Allen was one of the biggest songs of the year of, uh, of the century, uh, an, an English ballad that came over here. And uh, Streets of Laredo was a big song. Get, and I used the real words, get six pretty whore gals to carry my coffin. 
Uh, of course, my daughter, Noel had to be a horror gal. You're in that movie, aren't you, Sasha? Yeah, you are. I was in that movie. Yeah, you're about six years old or five. Uh, I was six. Oh, uh, see, I remembered. Noel was on me. Dad, can I be a horror gal? I want to be a horror gal. <laughs> So, I was young enough to be a schoolgirl, so that was nice. Yeah, you were in, in class with Jade and Nathan. It was really, and Ryan, it was really fun. And uh, I wrote the script, I put the music together. It was a big deal for me. I think I did a good job, too. And Nashville Network ran it like 14 times or something. It was uh, really fun. This is when you're getting your next question ready, Sasha. <laughs> I know. Not why. Uh, I think the uh, the next biggest question is for one more song. Oh no! And then I think whatever your favorite would be. I can't ignore. Uh, I don't think I'd ever say. I never thought I would say that people are requesting more banjo music. Oh. Is it okay if I play a Carter family song on the guitar? Yep. Uh, it's because it's kind of a... It's not Will the Circle Be Unbroken, but Maybell Carter, which was a very, she was a very sweet lady. She wrote a song that can be thought of today in the same... troubled side of life there's a bright and a sunny side too though we meet with the darkness and strife may the sunny side always come to you keep on the sunny side always on the sunny side the sunny side of life it will help you every day. It will brighten all our way. If we keep on the sunny side of life. Get it, boys. this with Maybell Carter. It's one of the songs I thought was really important to record because of this last verse, especially. It's on the Will the Circle Be Unbroken album, which was, if you were watching the Ken Burns show, it was episode six of Ken Burns. There we go. Oh, the storm and its fury broke today. Oh, the storm in its fury broke today, crushing hopes that we all held so dear. Clouds and storms, in time will pass away. The sun again will shine bright and clear. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all our way. If we keep on the sunny side of life. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Hey, everybody. Can you see this? He played Sunnyside. Sunny yeah, yeah, I, like sunny. I just finished Sunnyside. I, 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 I bet it's interesting. All right, we've got we've got two big questions left and then Okay, let's go. Whatever you'd like after that. The first one is when will you be playing in Silver Plume again? Your last show was fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know. And that wasn't a setup because that's where I live. <laughs> we played the George Downing Playhouse. That was wonderful. What's the other question? The other question is, were there two banjos in Soldier's Joy from the Circle album? Yeah, two uh, Earl Scruggs and me. I played, I played Uncle Dave Macon's banjo, which was made in 19... 28 and uh he had it had been sold to earl years right after uncle dave died and uh and i played it frailing style and uh yeah that was it <laughs> two banjos and a bass thank you thank you thank you thanks john that was great okay i'm gonna we'll uh, roll down the road here the soldier's joy. really quick um a couple of people would just like you to tell them about the um the meal train that you wanted people to do donations to well go to my facebook site and you'll read about meal train which is a thing that was set up i'm trying to raise money for a previous neighbor hey, Dr. Sequoia was a neighbor uh, a couple of people i people lived know. upper east side when marilyn uh, and i lived uh, upper east side new york and down the hall he, he and his three kids we're just wonderful. The, the kids are like three, five, and seven. And I've known them since we even babysat them. We're on the sixth floor of a, of a building. It's, and he has now worked his way up to being the head guy of five different clinics in upper Manhattan. And his staff is working so hard, they forget to eat. They can't eat. They forget to eat, whatever. They don't have time to go out for food. They don't have time to go, can you make me a cheeseburger, please? Uh, you know, so meal train orders, they have somebody order the food, they get it delivered, long story short, 15 people go eat at three o'clock when they go back to work. And that happens at five different clinics. But it's a wonderful thing, mealtrain.com. Go to my Facebook, look at the website, or I'll send it to Sasha. And we've raised about $3,500 so far. And these guys, you've seen them. You've seen them on, on New York. They go into work at 7. They leave at 7 or 9 or whatever. Then go back and do it again. Go back to try and, go back to try and uh, catch something. Meal Train was set up by Dr. Tafoya. And uh, his... Uh, his daughter set it up. Just a moment here, and it's a it's a wonderful thing that is reaching 
a whole bunch of people uh, we're still there, I believe. You're still there. So I'm going to just show you Evie, who was a little girl that I met and, and uh, years ago. And when she, I met her when she was two or three, and now she's not. She's just a cute kid. And uh, here's a picture of Dr. Mike Tafoya and his daughter Evie coming at you in just a second. Get over there. That's me. Don't want that. Yeah, there they are. You see that, Sasha? Now, Evie came to my door, came to our door when she was three years old. She knocks on the door. I open it up. I'm, I look at, oh, hi, Evie. And it's like not eight in the morning or something because I'm looking around the door, you know. She goes, hello, John McEwen. She was just like you, Sasha. It's, uh, <laughs> and I said, Evie, I don't have my pants on or whatever. I'm in bed. Well, go get some pants on and I'll wait here. Evie? Mm -hmm. like in the morning or something. And anyway, she mm -hmm. wanted to borrow an egg for her mother or something, a sugar um, or whatever. It's just like you, Sasha. It's, uh, <laughs> anyway. She's running, she's running the meal train thing, and I hope you people check it out. Thank you. That's my speech. Thank you for your music and your stories. Oh, you're welcome. My stories are your stories. Going to be more. Thank you all for joining. Thank us. you. I want to thank you, John McEwen, and I want to thank you, John Fit, Fid, uh, Wilson, for donating your time and being so wonderful to us. And by the way, we raised over $400 for our local EMT and our fire department. And that's a big deal for us. Plus you. Can you still, can, you, can I still be heard? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know. But yeah, the, the EMT people, they're, they're always the ones that need it in the fire department for sure. But yeah, good. Get, give everything to the EMT people. Because as soon as you make the phone call and nobody answers, you're going to say, what's wrong, right? Yeah. There's, there's, nobody, there's no ambulance. There's no whatever. I need help. Well, they give it. Well, John, what you did tonight is, and you and, uh, and John Wilson, is you helped us to keep a restaurant with some money. You helped keep our arts alive. And you helped the organization that you love in New York to give to first responders and you helped our EMT and our uh, fi local fire department. So thank you so much. You're you welcome. Everything for yeah, us. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm glad to do it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go watch the news. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, well, good night and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye, John. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. 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 Um, you're helping us to keep the cultural arts program and now virtual yeah. arts program alive. And in two weeks, we will have a concert with all Anna and Seth. Yeah. Are we got? Am I off? I'm off. No. You're good. Am I good? Okay. China and Seth from All Right, All Right will do a concert for us in two weeks. And uh, um, we really appreciate you all. Um, please watch your social media and uh, we'll, we'll email on social media about the next concert. Um, we appreciate you and you're making a difference to um, all of the groups that we are helping out tonight. Thanks. Good night all. I have no idea what it does. Okay, will you go back to yeah. me, Nick? I'm going to go now, Sasha, okay? Can you see Thank me? Thank you, Amanda. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, uh, 
Thank you, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. That was great. A great food. Yes, Amanda. No, I can't. Everyone. I just like to say thank you one more time. Where are you, Sasha? Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. Good job, Sasha. You, you did such an Thank you all job. so much. I you and Paul. Sasha and Paul make this happen. Here, I see Nick and I see Norma. I see Matt. Me and Amanda. I see a handsome guy with a beard. <laughs> and the bow tie. Yeah. Oh. Hey, everyone, I'm back. <laughs> Again, thank you so much um, for participating. This was really, really fun. And um, we'll keep this open for about another half hour for anybody that would like to chat and then just say goodbye on your way out. Thank you again okay. so much. Thank Have a great you, night. Wonderful. Hey. 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 More than you know. Uh, so much. And the oh, Reaper. So much. Hi, Sasha. Are we done? I'm going to head Thanks, out. Sasha. Good night. I'm headed out if Hi. I can find the right button. Bye, Christine. Good night. Bye, Bye Christine. Have a good night. Thank